fallacious. It's on its face. It's madness. It is corrupt. It's it's evil. And it's fraudulent. It's a pseudo form of happiness that people are finding. But they can beam. They can, by all appearances, they can beam with joy, what appears to be real, true, solid, sound joy and happiness and peace of mind and a sense of safety and a sense of security. They're not in financial fear. A real sense of freedom that they emanate because they're not in... They're financially free. They're not financially enslaved. They're, they've risen to the top. And in their minds, the cream always rises to the, trot, to the top. But they forget another thing that rises to the top, and that's scum. And that's those that forget about those that aren't as strong as them, that aren't as astute as them. And even if they were as strong as, and as astute, maybe they're just turned off. Maybe they're enlightened and they realize the difference between good, solid, sound, godly sanctioned, godly approved values and pseudo values, worldly values, temporary values, monetary values, material values. Okay? You understand the problem we're up against? So you need to understand just how dramatic this problem is, how widespread it is, and how we all have our own individual struggles, not to mention the collective struggles. And then this deliberate division that's added to the mix to keep us divided on local levels in our local communities, to keep people thinking that we're divided between liberals and conservatives and Democrats and Republicans and socialists and conservative thinkers. Okay, not, not really taking the time to consider where these erroneous thought systems, belief systems are emanating from. And they're coming from the top of the heap. They're coming from the scum that has risen to the top of this pyramid of power, perverted power, the grand puppeteers, the masterminds of evil the kingpins. And who exactly are these people? These are the top politicians. These are the money printing class. Okay, these are the top money lovers, just as Jesus spelled out in Scripture. And money is likened to a false god. Do you understand the implications, the ramifications, and how easy it is to be deceived into believing that's all true, that this really is the right path, is just to toe the line of the current establishment and jump on the bandwagon of the establishment and adhere to this current establishment and the status quo. And if you want to succeed, then you must think pra pragmatically you must go along with the establishment. It's the only way. You're just stupid, basically. You lack common sense. If you, you're not practical if you go the other direction and you try to change the world. You're, you're a pipe dreaming idealist. You're a nut job. You're out of your mind. You're a weakling. You're a dropout. And you just use it as an excuse for your weakness you understand how the world views those that are often the most enlightened ones, the thinkers out there? The thinkers. That's what I consider myself. I'm just a thinker. I like to look at all the angles. I listen to plenty of people, all sorts of people, all sorts of pundits out there in the mass media, the mainstream media, the alternative media, on the Internet. I, I listen to everybody. And I know BS when I hear it. And the best BS, the most convincing BS, comes out of the hearts and minds and mouths of those that really believe their own BS. It's very good, and they're delusional people. Now, some of them are on the border. You can tell that they're struggling. Their conscience are struggling with spewing out nonsense and 
then their conscience, they have a conscience they value too. So they've got a battle, they're, a war they're waging within their own members of saying it's all true. We've got to look squarely at what's going on here if we ever hope to extricate ourselves from this mess. And understanding that it's by the very finger, the very hand of God that is helping us, that's going to do it because we're in a lot of trouble. I mean, where does the buck stop? I'll tell you where the buck stops. The buck stops when you, as an individual, demand it stops. When you understand what's going on here, how you're being tyrannized, when your rent goes up, when your mortgage costs go up, that's how you're being tyrannized. That's an essential human need. It's called shelter. It's called a roof over your head. Every creature on the face of the earth seeks its own individual unique form of shelter, okay? And human beings are no different. We all need some form of shelter, otherwise we perish in the elements. That's just a matter of fact. That's just the way it is. So you understand how cruel it is to price people out of their shelter that they need to survive, but that's what's going on right under our noses. And it's been going on for decades. And they blame capitalism. People that call themselves socialists will blame capitalism. Remember, you've got people that really believe in socialism. And then you've got liars that don't believe. They know by empirical evidence it's never worked. They also know it's definitely a form of theft. All it creates is animosity. And the, those in society that can comfortably afford to pay the bills of society find loopholes. They get attorneys, and the attorneys, in turn, find them ways to avoid, to evade paying their taxes through a socialist system, right, which is that it's a Robin Hood thing, right? We take from the haves to give to the have-nots, wealth redistribution. It sounds very virtuous on its face. So it's a real problem when you've got people that are lying to you, telling you they believe that socialism is the path to solve our societal problems, socially, politically, and economically speaking. And those that, uh, that really believe it, and the same goes for capitalism. Capitalism gets blamed for our problem. They say, well, you know what I mean? It's the fault of capitalism. That's why, you know, your cost of living keeps going up. Your rent keeps going up, which, of course, is just the genesis, right? Your rent goes up on your housing. This is, this is the starting point. They've got to pick on essential human needs, something you can't get away from. And housing is their drug of choice in this case. So by manipulating markets, rigging market, fixing prices, they have driven up housing costs, and this causes a chain reaction effect. So whereby people that are just trying to stay even Stephen, they're not even trying to make any economic, so financial improvements in their lives perhaps, but they do want to keep even Stephen because they know exactly what they need to continue to afford the creature comforts, the level of prosperity that they've been enjoying they know that they need to charge more for whatever goods and services that they provide to society. And if they don't get an automatic cost of living adjustment, when their cost of living is being driven up through cost of living inflation, artificially induced cost of living inflation, by the way, then they need to do something to raise it themselves. If they're self-employed, then they need to do something to raise their cost. Otherwise, they're losing ground, and anybody can tell you it's just like dipping into your savings. You know eventually it's going to run out, and then you've got to face the music, right? And you've got to pay the piper. And you know that the sooner you wake up and smell the coffee, the better off you are. That it's called being prepared. It's called having a little forethought so that you're not caught unawares with your pants down, right? When uh, the day of reckoning comes and you don't have any money left to pay your bills and you're that guy out there seeking for a place under the bridge or in your car or at a shelter or a relative's couch, you understand? So that's just a starting point. Your housing costs keep driven up. So that means your housing dollars are being diluted. They're being debased. They are worth less than they were. You understand how this works. But those causing it don't care because they get more of those diluted dollars go on their side of the ledger. 
So therefore, the theft, which is legal theft right under our noses, right, because the top politicians legitimize it. They validate it. These are the rubber stampers for the money printing class. These are the diluters of the currency through currency printing, money printing, willy-nilly, putting the country in debt over $20 trillion. It's a mind-boggling debt. And this, at the same time, we're creating more and more multi-billionaires. The gap between the haves and have-nots keeps growing. That wealth imbalance, that wealth disparity keeps growing. So these people have gotten it down to a science. They know exactly what they're doing. They are very good at walking a tightrope here. They know how far they can push the public and get away with it. If you look into this thing that's called the Overton window, you'll understand this science of what the public will withstand. And today with people being mesmerized by their smartphones and you know them shipping in young, strong immigrants all the time, they don't care about the weak links of society breaking. They figure they've got young conditioned people that are just going to accept ever-growing tyranny and they're going to listen to people and tell them that they're spoiled for making or wanting to make 15 bucks an hour minimum wage and Bernie Sanders is way off base and that's just outrageous at the labor class. How dare the working class be so piggy unish, be so greedy, so selfish to demand that. I mean, don't they know they're hurting businesses and employers and they're going to cause inflation? Do you understand the madness? And how a guy like me, I see this, and I, how unnerving and unsettling and, and utterly untenable I find it. And I've got to speak out, and I've got to defend the minimum wage workers and defend the workers at large and the working class and blue-collar workers. and Just everyday people, Americans that... We used to, you know, a minimum wage job, a dollar an hour in the early 60s, you could afford a middle class life. I'm not making anything up. Uh, ask anybody from that generation. I was a child in the early 60s, but I could look around me, I could observe, I could see, okay, what was going on here. Everybody had dignity, a buck an hour. Do you understand? So somewhere along the line, somebody came up with an idea, a dollar an hour was sufficient. So use that as a, as a starting point, a benchmark in time. And you can see, we could, you could afford a middle-class life, be a homeowner, realize the American dream, raise a family, your wife could stay home, take care of the family if she wanted to. She could work if she wanted to, too. There's no problem there. We've always had that kind of equality. Women were always allowed to work um, and uh, earn their own money. So that's the America that we used to have. You understand? So you understand how this thing has happened, not overnight, but over a long period of time, incrementally, gradually. It's been a long, slow process. Just like the analogy of plunking the frogs in the pot of water. That if you turn up the heat slowly enough, the frogs won't jump out because they're lulled basically to sleep. They relax. It feels good. It's soothing. And that's what's happened to the public at large. See, the science of tyranny is what's been taking place over these decades since the assassination of JFK because he was a true capitalist. And the money printing class, who have a monopoly on that money, did not like competition because he was giving them a real run for their money, no pun intended, but <coughs> competition to these pen people is not only a sin but it's a mortal sin i believe that was a rockefeller quote maybe rothschilds i don't know doesn't matter but that's their mentality that's the caliber of these people they're elitists they're hypocrites they live by a double standard they think that they're better more blessed more deserving to be the ruling class and rule over you any which way they can it, they use deceptive practices no problem it's easy for them. I mean, these people are murderers, so yeah, of course they'll use deceptive pro practices. Like propaganda in the media, the way they make a mountain out of a molehill, and they'll make a molehill out of a mountain. You understand how that works? That's one form of the propaganda. It's very effective, very powerful in the public. It's easy to buy their BS, you know? So I don't blame the individual that's deceived and deluded. 
that chooses ignorance and willful ignorance as a course of action and prescribes to that ignorance as bliss philosophy. I, I can understand why people would want to do that, but I'm telling you, my friends, it's, we're never going to extricate ourselves from this if we don't first understand the problems here and then pray to God